Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Viresh. So in the continuation to our series on Apache Spark interview questions, today we have a topic which is what is the difference between the Spark context and the Spark session? This is a very infamous interview question and today we'll look in detail what is the difference between the two and why do we need a Spark session? So guys, let's start. So if we try to find out what is Spark session, so with the newer version of Spark, that is Spark 2.0, the unified entry point for Spark application, which with earlier version was Spark context, is changed to Spark session. So previously, whenever you used to initiate a driver, driver will uh, you know start a process called Spark context, and it will contain all the configurations that what is the uh, master URL, to run the cluster, to run the Spark application, what is the name of the application, what are the different configuration properties you want to set, all that would be holded by Spark context in the uh, previous versions. But now in the Spark version 2.0 and forward, this has been replaced with Spark session. Another thing which is worth it to note is in the previous versions, we had multiple different contexts like we had Spark context, Hive context, SQL context. Now with the Spark session, all of this is encapsulated in a single object that is Spark session. So in a very nutshell, we can say Spark session is the combination of all these contexts and this is available with Spark version 2.0. Just a quick note, if you see, this is how we used to create our Spark context. Right? and we pass in that configuration object. And in the configuration object, you set all the properties like the master, the app name and others. So that configuration is tied up with that Spark context. And for one application run, you had one Spark, con Spark context object uh, available, right? So one Spark context object for one Spark application run and then you will have one set of configuration tied up with that. With the Spark session, these things have changed and you get a flexibility that you can have different flavors or versions of configurations tied up with different Spark sessions so that each user can have its own isolated and independent set of con. We'll look at with an example. So uh, the next obvious question comes up is why do we need a Spark session if you already had Spark con? context. One obvious answering could be is that now you have a single object instead of multiple different contexts. Very true. But as we have discussed, the biggest advantage that we get with the Spark session is that we have independent isolated set of configurations with multiple Spark sessions. So if there are a number of different users which are sharing a single cluster where I have a single Spark context available, then I can make number of different Spark sessions per user with their own set of configuration which are absolutely isolated and independent and that can go as an input to the Spark single Spark context to run the Spark application. So this has numerous advantages. Each user or each set of Spark job run by different clients will have its own independent set of configuration, will have its own unique flavor of configurations, whatever he wants to set without disturbing the other configurations, right? So what it says is all Spark sessions for a single application run, all Spark sessions will point to the same Spark context, but with their own set of configurations, right? When we say configurations, this means the different properties that we can set in the spark.conf.set, the different tables, the views, the internal tables we're talking about and other properties. Now try to look at this diagram and understand. So prior to Spark 2.0, we had a single Spark context and Spark configuration objects is tied up with that. So whatever configuration I set up, that will be applicable to all the users trying to share, the, trying to use this shared cluster. So if I want to change this configuration for different users, it's not possible. The only way to do that would be to create multiple different Spark context objects. Spark context 1, 2, and 3. That would be the only way to create multiple configuration 
independent configuration set for multiple users. But this is not recommended and not encouraged because it will make the entire cluster more unstable and crashing of one Spark context will affect the others. So this is absolutely not recommended. However, it was possible in the earlier versions if you set this property to true. If you set this property to, to true, you could have different Spark context for each user or client with their own set of configurations, but that will make the entire uh, uh, running of the Spark applications unstable and crashing of one context would certainly could have ripple effects on the other. Now let's see how the things have changed with the Spark session. As we already discussed, the Spark sessions can be created uh, for multiple users. They can have their own set of Spark sessions with their individual set of uh, Spark configuration objects. So each Spark session is tied up with its own Spark configuration object and all of them would be sharing the single Spark context. So we get away that problem of having multiple Spark contexts, which makes the entire thing unstable. So that we have countered. We only have a single Spark context, but we have different Spark sessions with their individual Spark configurations sharing the same Spark context for a single application run. So this is the biggest advantage why Spark session is introduced and how it leverages the single Spark context, but with their own independent flavor or Spark configurations. Now let's try to see it from the code perspective. If I go to the notebook and just try my Spark, that is the impli or on the shell, this is the impl implicit Spark uh, session provided. And if I run it, I'll get the Spark object hash code. So if you see this hash code, this is some uh, hexadecimal value. And if I try to create a new session, I can create multiple Spark sessions, right? So this is the API. I created a new session. And if I try to see, the new session has got a different object reference. So they are unique and different, and they can tied up with their own set of configurations. But if I try to see what Spark context object is referenced by the two, we'll see that they are hooked onto the same Spark context object. See this number and see this number. They are hooked on to a single Spark context. So for a single application run, we have handled the situation with a single Spark context, but with multiple Spark sessions with having their own isolated and independent configuration. So if I set some property to a Spark session one and try to get it, that configuration would only be available to that particular instance or Spark session. If you see here, I have enabled cross join true in the Spark session first. And if I try to get it, I get a true value. But in Spark session two, I leave it as default. So for Spark session two, I'm getting this property, configuration property value as false. So when we say independent configurations, configurations include all these configurations, right? You want to enable some property, you want to set some shuffle partition size, you want to set the application name, etc. Also, the set of internal tables that you create with that session, that is also uh, isolated and independently tied to the individual Spark sessions. For instance, if I create some uh, this temporary view with the implicit Spark session first, and if I try to see all the tables available, I'll see this table, which I've created. But with Spark session two, I'll not see this table. So this table is tied to the individual with its own Spark session objects and instances. So guys, that's it in this particular video about the difference between the Spark context and session. Keep learning. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.